Hey, what's up guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and in today's tutorial, we're gonna show you how to lock layer masks to other layers inside of After Effects. As always, the project file containing everything you see here, including all the setups for the thumbnails and everything, can be bought off our website for a dollar. So this is what we're gonna be doing. You can see we have a mask here that's following our van, and it's revealing this shadow texture below. And this is lovingly uh, visualized by Path Visualizer from Plugin Everything on AE Scripts, just so that we can see it while it's animating. I'm gonna turn that off, and now we're just gonna take a look at what we have. Now, we can always have track mats follow and reveal things below, but then we end up with weird issues where if we wanna have three of them, as we have three vans here, we'd have to have three track mats and three texture layers. And depending on what you wanna do, it can get a little bit tedious. You might want to also have a bunch of different things moving around screen that are parented to nulls or something like that. And so we want a little bit more robust of a solution. We also want a solution that nets us less layers so that we can have cleaner comps and work more efficiently. So this solution does that. As you can see, if I click on this second van right here, we can move this around and our shadow follows. I only have it linked in the X dimension because this thing is really just going to stay level. But we can also do that where it'll move around the entire screen, and I will show you how to do that. However, this could be useful if you had something like an airplane flying over and you wanted the shadow to stay on the ground and you didn't want to necessarily, you know, be affected so much by the vertical movements of the object. So the basic idea here is to use our layer's position as an offset for our mask. So let's grab the initial expression and then I will show you how to modify it to move it in two dimensions. So first we're gonna set up a variable called X offset, and that is gonna look at the position of, in this case, the first one, and I've split these dimensions so that we have an X position and a Y position, but you could do this with a regular position. And again, I'll show you how to do that when we go in the vertical direction as well. But in our case, we're gonna grab the transform.x position from that layer. And then notably, we're gonna subtract a value because we have to account for where our layer is already at because we're gonna move this path at some point to this area. And if I had then just added this 1295 to this, that would just push the path you know, out of my comp. So we first need to kind of zero this out. Depending on where you actually start to set up this mask, like if I was over this keyframe instead, I'd need to subtract 1685. So in this case, I set up the mask when I was on 1295. As you can see, if I turn this off, nothing moves. If I went over here and I turn this off, it'll jump back. So hopefully that makes sense. So I'm gonna turn that back on, it'll jump back to where it should be, and we're all good. So now anything that changes beyond 1295 in either direction will then also be applied to this mask. So how do we do that? We're gonna grab our points from our current mask, and as this expression is applied to the mask path, we're just gonna grab this property dot points, and then we're gonna go through a loop. So we're gonna go for i equals zero, while i is less than points dot length, we're gonna do i plus plus. So this is gonna loop through every single point that we have on our mask, and so for every one of those points, we're gonna add the offset. So we're gonna take points i, so whichever one we're on in the loop, and then we're gonna do plus equals, so basically adding to this initial value, this x offset comma zero. So we're not gonna affect y, so we're just gonna add basically the position of our layer that's been zeroed out. So whatever change it makes from where this is initially, at the initial condition, I guess we'll call it, we'll add that to X and then we'll add nothing to Y. So that as this thing moves, all of the points will be moved by the same amount. And then just in case we have tangents, we're gonna take intans and we're gonna set that equal to this property dot intangents. And we're gonna set out tans equal to this property dot out tangents. And then we're gonna create a new path that replaces the one that we have. And so we're gonna do create path we're gonna pass in the new points, so the ones that all have been offset, intans, outtans, and we're gonna set it to true because this path is closed. Thankfully, tangents are actually just relative to their point, so we don't have to offset them, in case you're wondering. So, let me show you how to set up the next one. Say I go in this layer, and I'm actually gonna move this one over and out of the way, and so I want to draw a new mask on here. I could also copy one of these, but I'm just gonna draw a new one. We're gonna do something similar, just add this guy, Modify it this way, you know, hit F, feather that. I feathered them a little bit differently, so, so we kind of extend it with the background, and you know, that's good. So then I'm gonna hit M again. It's gonna bring up the mask path. And instead of actually adding this to this, I'm just gonna go back into Expressionist and modify this one. So instead of using X offset, I'm gonna make this offset so that's a little bit more easy to understand later on. This is layer three. And if you're using multiple of basically the same layer like I am, make sure to name them so that this is a little bit less confusing. So then we're gonna take this dot transform 
And we're going to take off X off of here and we're going to lowercase this position. And so then we need to change this, right? So we need to figure out the position of this thing. And I have these things split still. So let's just unseparate those dimensions. And so I'm going to take this, I'm going to make this easier on my on myself. And we're going to do 15 and then it was 88. And I'm going to make this 511 even. So over here, we have an array in the original position. And so we're going to subtract another array of the same dimension. So we're going to do 1588 comma 511. All right. So then we're going to grab the points just like we did before, go through them all. And guess what? All of that, that's all you have to do. So that's that. Now we just add that to here with this guy. I always forget which one that one is. And then we get an error because I messed something up. So what is it? Let's see. Did I match this up? Oh, I didn't change the X offset. All right. I was wrong. We weren't done. Boom. Offset. There we go. So in this case, uh, something else I missed is that we're not going to just add offset into this because now we're just putting an array inside of an array. This is just now offset. Okay. That should work. There we go. Move this out of the way. And now if we take three and we move this guy around and that thing is stuck like I have been inside my house for the past, I don't know what, like six months. Anyway, <laughs> that's pretty much it for this thing. Let's check out the thumbnail because everybody always asks how that's made. And in this case, so we're again using Path Visualizer on top. I've got some chromatic aberration on there. I have a texture, a little looping texture guy I've made over top of that thing. Some more texture. These vans, their shadows, these little trees in the background, this line. It's a little line shadow thing. More trees, a hill, a bunch of clouds. Speaking of clouds, this tutorial is brought to you by Element Supply Co. As you probably know by now, we're partners in it. And we actually just collaborated with everybody to make Nimble Nimbus, which we think is pretty damn amazing. So you guys should go check that out at elementsupply.co. If this were an actual animation, I would have used Nimble Nimbus on this thing, but I didn't because I uh, just needed stills. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I actually just used this technique on a spot for a client and was really helpful with being able to put pretty much all the shadows on one layer. So I hope you guys like this one too. And if you did, make sure to subscribe. If you'd like to help support what we do, check out workbench.tv slash support. And as always, I'm Joe. We'll see you next time. Bye.